What happened? Why aren't we seeing anything? What? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I, 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 I didn't get that. You said what? The film burned. <laughs> sorry, I'm lost here. I don't seem to understand what that means. What film? Wait, wait. Oh, we shot on film? Why? I told you to shoot on film? Why on earth would I ask you to do that? Sorry? Oh, I wanted it to look old school. Oh my god. So, if I ask you to jump over the bridge, you would, Abby? Yeah? Okay, 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 okay. All right. So, what is the way forward now? What? We have backup. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. <sighs> fine. Let's roll the backup then. Quickly, my audience is waiting. <laughs> pause it, pause it, pause, just pause it. I hear no narration. Where is the... Hmm? What happened to the narrator's voice that I paid a lot for? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. It sounded like you said there is no sound. Why, why is there no sound? Wow. The backup film has no sound attached to it. Wow. What? I, <laughs> I didn't get that. I should narrate the story. Hmm? Wow. You know what? Remind me to fire you and your entire crew after this, okay? <sighs> okay, play the film. Wait, where are you all going now? Ah, huh? I said after the film, I'll f Okay, you know what? No one is getting fired again. Just roll the camera or the projector or whatever you call it. Look, just roll the damn thing! NYSC. Every parent's way of proving to their friends that we actually graduated from the university, despite all the certificates we come home with to prove that, NYSC says it all for them. But to us, it's the struggle, the pain, the anticipation of a new life, the adventures of a new society, culture. But let's face it, to most, it's just a nightmare or a complete waste of time. Over the years, there have always been a story about coppers and how they were abducted by some spiritual god or the other, or about the struggles of NYSC due to a bad government system, not paying salaries and all that boring stuff. But I'm here to tell you something different. Something every youth copper plans to find during service. Freedom, love, and a new beginning. Wait, wait, wait. So that means I have to narrate the entire story. <sighs> just, just roll. Halima, the only child of our parents, so you wouldn't blame her if she craved a little freedom of her own. And NYC had just granted her that. Although a week late due to her health condition, Halima was Come eager in. to experience life differently and the excess load her mother had packed for her wasn't about to stop her. 
The day was just right for her that bumping into nice strangers after a long ride from Gumbi didn't seem like a bad idea. <laughs> ah, Halima. Despite the fact that she couldn't still understand what her mother had put into her bag that made it so heavy, Halima was determined to make the most of her stay. Finally, she was here. And not just in any camp, Lagos Orientation Camp. As she stayed around, all she could feel was freedom. Freedom to be who she really wanted to be. And nothing was about to take that away. It was a hot, frustrating, sunny afternoon on the parade grounds, but not hot enough to dampen Halima's spirit. Now, settling in was a bit difficult for Halima due to her very shy nature, but luckily for her, she met Kemi. Kemi was the girl who was dropped over by that nice man Halima bumped into earlier in our story. She claims it was her uncle. They introduced themselves and Kemi decided to show her around. But our story is not about how Kemi and Halima became best friends. No, no, no. It's about this guy. Now every campground always has that guy or girl that makes things happen. The life of the party. The money spender. In short, the bad boy. The one that could do no wrong and a friend to all. Yes, that's our guy, Bolaon. And it so happened to be that Halima and Bolaon were in the same platoon. And for days now, that was all Halima could talk about. To the irritation of Kemi, of course, who couldn't stand a word of his name. A few hours had gone by and the soldiers had gathered to deliberate how they would toss lives around. So, Halima took time to stare at her newfound love. GB's sight brought nothing but happy thoughts. <laughs> ah, Halima. But then, something happened. GB turned to Halima. What? Halima couldn't believe her eyes. GB had turned to look at her. What is this? He looked again. <laughs> oh, Halima couldn't hide her joy anymore. The biggest and baddest boy in camp just looked at her with a smile on his face and no one seemed to have noticed. <laughs> her feet danced with joy because something unthinkable had just happened. <laughs> a long stand on the parade ground had just ended, so Halima and Kemi decided to head for their rooms. And just as if the gods had not finished playing a fast one on Halima, GB approached them and asked Kemi to give himself and Halima a minute or two. What was happening? Halima was staring into the eyes of the most talked about guy in camp and he was actually asking for her name. My God! She tried looking towards Kemi for help but as usual she was glued to her phone and paid no attention to anything else. So Halima knew something had to be done 
because a young, dark and tall handsome guy was asking for her name. And then it happened. Our little Halima summed up courage and spoke. <laughs> oh, the heavens had opened wide for our girl. It was like angels were rejoicing with her. Gibi was not only asking for her name, he also asked for her number. And all Kemi could do was stand there and press her phone. Even I can believe this. But the angels were caught short as Bolaon's friends came and interrupted everything. <laughs> but for our Halima, it was the sign of a beautiful beginning. Ah, Halima. The days couldn't get any better for her. Jibi would come around, snatch her away from Kemi. They would hang out, have lunch together. Jibi would tell her funny stories. The same would happen the next day. Hang out, lunch, funny stories. <laughs> and the next, and the next. In fact, it was all that happened for over a week since she arrived in camp. Ah, love was in the air and nothing could go wrong for our Halima. <laughs> Until this. As you can see, this face is entirely different from this face. Now, this face shows hope, promise, and life, while this face shows sorrow, confusion, disappointment, and it's all because of this young man here. Our Prince Charming had stopped seeing her. Oh, Halima. All she could do was to wonder. What had gone wrong? Why had her man chosen to ignore her? Ah, poor Halima. A few more days had gone by, so Halima and Kemi decided to hang out with their newfound friends, Bola and Joy. Now, Bola was the information box in camp. She knew all and saw all. As a matter of fact, it was discovered that on her arrival to camp, she had a fight with a certain bus conductor, which led to bodies flying everywhere. But that's another story for another time. Wait, 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 wait. When does Bola's story come in? Sorry? Okay, at the end. Why at the end? So it comes up before or after end credits. Please, who edited this thing? You know what? You know what? Never mind. Rotate, please. <sighs> so while they soaked themselves with the latest gist in camp, all Al Halima could do was wonder why Bolan wasn't calling. Hmm. But our girl was in luck. She received an unknown call, and to her surprise, <laughs> it was Bolao. Halima was so happy to hear his voice again. He explained why he kept away for a while, but that didn't matter. She was just glad he called. Ah, uh, Halima. She was filled with so much joy that this time, Kemi had no choice but notice. Ah, uh, everything was perfect for our little Halima. <laughs> Campfire night. 
the D-Day for every youth copper. Well, aside from the Pasina Parade, but this day marked the day of freedom for all coppers, a day of celebration and intense jubilation. But unfortunately for Halima, it wasn't the case because Madame Bola paid her a visit and there is sure to be bad news with her around. Now Bola came to Halima that night and told her that she had seen GB and he was having a lot of fun. At first, Halima wasn't surprised because GB had told her earlier that he had planned to have a lot of fun by the campfire and later come to get her. This was because Halima was asthmatic and couldn't stand close to the fire. But that wasn't what Bola had seen. What she saw was entirely different. She had seen Bolao with another girl, and who she saw him with was no other girl than Kemi, Halima's best friend. And they were not just hanging out, no, 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 they were doing a whole lot more than that. Halima couldn't believe what she just heard. Her best friend, Kemi, was with her man? Ha! She took to her heels and ran straight to where the fire was, and behold, she saw her man and her best friend cuddling by the fire. Oh, Halima. She was torn into tiny pieces. Uh, so Kemi, who we thought wasn't noticing anything. Was actually paying full attention. Oh, poor Halima. It was said earlier that coppers come to serve their country in search of freedom, love, and a new beginning. But in Halima's case, all she found was deceit, betrayal, and a rude awakening. Well, not all stories have a happy ending, but for our Halima and her life as a youth copper, it was a true tale of freedom. When does Bola's story come up? Eh? What? You forgot? Oh, you forgot to play a scene I paid for? Oh my goodness. Ah, God. You know what? Just, just play the damn thing. In short, all of you are fired. You hear me? All of you are fired. Now get out. Sorry? Will you? Get out!
Basically, Bola likes women. He's very popular. He's, uh, and I want to go out to the first uh, This biscuit is too sugar. We should do something good. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I Thank <laughs> you. 